In today's video I'm going to share with you a few tips and tricks to help you choose the right size backpack for your camping trips. When I first started out on my camping and backpacking journey, I picked myself up a Berghaus Cyclops 100 litre Bergen and then I got the 20 litre rocket packs to go on the side. So I was rocking 120 litres for my first backpack. So as you can imagine, I filled it to the rafters. I took pots, pans, enough clothes for a week probably. And I was only having a one night overnight trip on Kinder Scout. But by the time I got to the top of the hill, I was dying, my back was breaking, and I felt like I had the weight of the world on my shoulders. But I've learned a few bits and bobs since then, so I thought I would share a few tips on how I would go about choosing the correct size backpack for my camping trips. In an ideal world, you could have a backpack for every different occasion, whether it's 20 litres, 30 litres, all the way up to 120 litres if you're going on a massive expedition. And because I'm an outdoor YouTuber, I'm fortunate enough to have plenty of different packs to choose from. But for most people, that isn't practical. You want maybe one pack that does everything. So my first suggestion would be to not go running out and buying a backpack as your first bit of outdoor gear. You're much better off buying things like your shelter and your sleeping system first because they're very bulky items and that way you'll have much more of an idea of what size backpack you're going to need. A good example of this is if I was only going with a bivvy shelter such as this one, I would tend to need much less volume than if I was going to take a tent. Therefore, if you're bivvy camping in the summer, it's very unlikely that you're going to need anything like a 60 or 70 litre backpack. I've camped many occasions and only needed a 30 litre backpack. So once you've chosen your shelter system and your sleep system, uh, what you could do is you could take them along to your local outdoor shop and try fitting them in one of the packs before you buy it. Most of them are really helpful. I can't see them having any problem in letting you do that, as long as it's clean, of course. Another way that you could do this at home is to get something like a bin or a large plastic container and start loading all of your gear into it. This one here is a 33 litre container. Once you've filled the container up with your gear, put that lot to one side and then put the rest of your gear in. And let's say it only fills up to halfway. That would mean in this case, I'd want something around the 50 litre mark. Another thing that you may want to factor in is the times of year and the temperatures that you're going to be camping in. So if you're going to be camping in winter, you may need to take some extra gear with you. So um, when it comes to checking your rucksack size and your volume, you need to take into account things like puffer jackets, maybe some extra layers and some sleeping gear. That's where sometimes it is good to have a couple of rucksacks. So for example, summer camping, I can usually get away with a 30 litre backpack, but in winter, you know, I could really do with something that's around 60 litre if it's really cold. But if you can only afford one pack, definitely go with the one that has the greater volume. Uh, that way you can definitely use it all year round. And later on, I'll show you how you can fill some of that space um, without adding any weight to your pack. So when you've got a reasonable idea of the volume of all of your gear, you know, make sure that you leave some extra room in there for food, for depending on how long you're going to be backpacking for. Um, and you're also going to need to take some water with you potentially. So something with nice big pockets like this means that you can carry enough water for your trip. So you've got a pretty good idea now of what kind of volume pack you're going to need. The next really important thing is to go and try some on. Um, it's really crucial that you get something that is a really good fit. So again, go to a really good outdoor shop and they'll help you with fitting and sizing of a backpack. I wouldn't just order something offline unless you've tried it on first in the shop. If your kit's quite heavy, I recommend getting a pack with a hip belt as it helps distribute the weight much better. And you may want to pay attention to the design of your pack too, because there are certain features that can help you out. 
So some backpacks have large mesh pockets. My Osprey Exos has a large mesh pocket here, which means I can cram more gear on the side. If you did want to take a bit more gear for winter, such as extra clothes, you could put your tent on the outside of your pack. So you could either strap it to the top or undo some of the straps on the side, strap it to the side. So this will give you quite a bit more room inside for things like a jumper or your hot water bottle. So this particular pack has a really cool feature. You may be able to see here these compression straps. So I can undo these and then the pack goes from being a 40 litre pack in the compressed state to now it's a 60 litre pack. So in winter I can put all my gear in here and it fit in nice and snug but when I don't want to take so much gear in the summer I can just pull on these and then the pack becomes 40 litres again or anything in between so let's say I needed 50 litre capacity it might only strap up half away but it means that I've got a really versatile bit of kit that I can use anywhere between 40 and 60 litres so let's say that you went for a 50 litre pack but it's summertime and you only wanted to take the bivvy so you don't really need all of this capacity this is where it's a good idea not to have your sleeping gear in some kind of compression sack. If we take it out, as you can see the volume increases massively. So if I wanted to, I could fill this pack with just my quilt. So all that dead space is filled but I've still got the structure of the pack just as I want it. So I'm just going to squash this down. Put all of my gear on top. And because I've got my sleeping bag or quilt loose so it can expand and fill all of the gaps The pack is filled really nicely and I could actually get all this gear into a 30 litre pack. So I hope some of you have found this video useful. I don't want any of you rushing out buying a pack that is the wrong size so it's much better to get some of your other gear first and see what kind of volume you're going to need. One last thing to bear in mind, if you're getting a really lightweight pack, check with the manufacturer of what the load capacity is. If it only recommends that you're carrying something like 10 kilos, then don't start strapping loads and loads of stuff to the side, filling it up with beer and trying to carry 20 kilos with it. Firstly, it'll be really uncomfortable. And secondly, things might start breaking on the pack. So that's all I've got for you today. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time.